use Nest.js to build scalable server-side applications trusted by top-tier enterprises by learning its architecture and basic building blocks. JavaScript has become the dominant language for web development. This led to the creation of powerful frameworks like Angular, React, and Vue, which improve developer productivity and enable fast and extensible front-end applications. However, while there are plenty of server-side libraries and tools, they do not effectively address the main problem of architecture. Nest provides a ready-to-use application architecture inspired by Angular, which enables developers and teams to create highly testable, scalable, loosely coupled and easily maintainable applications. And while the framework itself can be vast and difficult to master, I decided to condense what I think are the most important concepts for you to learn into five building blocks. So let's start by installing the Nest.js CLI by running npm i minus g for the global installation flag and then the Nest.js slash CLI module. Now create a new Nest project by running Nest new and then the name of your project and select the package manager you would like to choose. I'm going to go with Yarn. As you can see, Nest has already created some files for us. For now, let's just focus on the main.ts file inside the source folder. This is the starting point of your application. And as you can see, we create the application module and then simply bootstrapped it to port 3000. To run your server, simply run yarn start or nest start. We now have our server up and running and we can see that by going into the browser and going to localhost on port 3000, where we can see a simple hello world message. So the first building block we are going to talk about is the controllers. Controllers are responsible for handling incoming requests and returning responses to the client. They serve as the main gateway between the server and the client. We can see our controller by going into the app.controller file. Inside, we have a class with the controller decorator and a function called getHello with the getDecorator. This function returns something that is being returned from a service. But for now, let's just delete the service and return a string saying, I'm a controller. To make the changes effective in the server, you have to stop it and run it again. One thing you can do is start the server with yarn start dev to enable hot reload. This way, every time you save a file, the changes will take effect immediately. Now, if we go to the browser, we can see that we received the message we've just made the controller return. Since the controller is the one responsible for handling the request, you can create all type of REST requests like the post, the put, and the delete by using the respective decorators. To change the path of the request, simply input it either in the controller decorator or in the REST requests or in both. If we now refresh the browser, we can see that we don't get any requests. This is because we defined the new path for the request, which is app slash message. You can also get the root parameters by adding a semicolon to the path with the variable name. Then simply import the param decorator from nest and pass in the name of the variable. Now, if we return a string with the variable, we can see that we get the root parameter from the path in the return string. But controllers should only handle the logic of routing. To handle more complex tasks, we can use services. A service is essentially a provider, which means that it can be injected as a dependency, enabling objects to create various relationships with each other. Or in other words, services can be called almost anywhere in your project. We already saw a service when we created our project, the app service. When you create a service, you can import it by creating a variable with its class in the constructor of where you want to use it. You can then call all of the services methods within your class. Let's create another get function for the main path and return the services get hello function. If you go to the app service file, you can see that it returns the string hello world. So now if we go to the app path, we get the same hello world as before. One good practice for your server apps is not only to do the more complex operations on the services, but also do the reads and writes from and to the database on the services and then return it to the controllers. So instead of having a bunch of controllers and services scattered all around our code, we can divide them into modules. Modules are a strongly recommended way to organize your components within your application. When we create a Nest project, we already create the app module, which serves as the root module for our entire application. This is where we define the controllers and the services that this module contains, 
as well as the modules we want to import and use it within this module. Let's assume for a moment that our application can handle and manage information about books. To accomplish this, let's create a module specifically for handling these books. We can do that by running a nest generate module books. And as you can see, not only does it create a module for the books, but it also imports it in the main app module. Our module will also need a controller to handle requests. So let's do that by typing nest generate controller books. And now let's just do the same for a new books service. Remember that the service is the one responsible for handling the data. So let's create a fake book database, which will be simply an array of strings with the values already defined. And then a get books function that simply returns the array. Now in the books controller, create a constructor and inject the books service by creating a variable from the constructor input parameters with the class of the service. Finally, create a get books function to handle the get requests to the books path and return the books we get from the service. From the browser, we can now access the books path and it will return our array of books. And not only that, but we still have the app path working all within a different module. Before a request reaches the controller, it can still pass through another building block called the guards. Guards have a single responsibility. They determine whether a given request will be handled by the controller or not, depending on certain conditions like permissions, roles, etc. So let's say we want to limit the access to our books only to administrators. We can do so by creating our admin guard by running nest generate guard admin. And inside this new file, we get the user from the request and create the logic to check if the user is an admin or not and simply return the Boolean. Now, please never validate a user's authorization like this. This is just an example to show you what a guard looks like. Now, to protect our books, go to the controller and add the use guard decorator with the class name of our guard. Now, if you try to access our books path, you will get a 403 forbidden error but the app path is still public. So much like the guards, we do have another building block that not only gets called before the controller, but also after the controller. This building block is called an interceptor. Interceptors have a set of useful capabilities like binding extra logic before and after each function, transforming the result returned from a function, completely overriding a function to handle caching, for example, and many more use cases. Let's create an interceptor that simply logs that a request was made for the app slash message path we defined earlier. Create one with nest generate interceptor logging. And in the app controller file under the get message path, put the use interceptors decorator with the class name of our interceptor. Now on our interceptor file inside the intercept function, simply do a console log saying that we did in fact receive a request. By reloading our path on the app, nothing happens, but if we do so in the message path, we can see the logging appearing in our terminal. By knowing only these five building blocks, I can assure you that you can already create very complex server apps. But there is still much more that Nest.js can offer to you, like for example, creating microservices, using GraphQL, creating a middleware, and many more use cases. So go check it out. I hope that you guys liked it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.